Hi, this is your third video for production of materials and it's going to be on polyethylene. Before we begin looking at polyethylene, let's start, uh, just do a quick review. So over here we have um, a picture of ethene and we know that ethene is its IUPAC name and um, its common name is ethylene. And when we take um, ethene and we plus it with um, any number of ethenes, and that's what the, the little n uh, stands for, just means number of, that we can create um, long chains and we call these polyethylene. So how do we make polyethylene? Well, we start with uh, crude oil and that gets uh, fractionally distilled, so fractional distillation. And from that, we get decay. Now, remember, um, some of the longer chained um, hydrocarbons aren't um, as popular or don't make enough money as the shorter chains do. And decaying um, is an example of that being one of our kerosenes. And so what we do is we break that apart. Now, there are two ways we can do that. We can uh, do thermal cracking or we can do uh, catalytic cracking. And which company employs which version just depends on the company itself. So both of them do the trick. And from the decane, we can break down and create um, ethylene. And then we get some groups of ethylene together, like I explained up here, to create uh, polyethylene. So now that we know the basics of how to get to polyethylene, there are actually two ways that we can create polyethylene. One is a low density polyethylene and the other is a high density. And these are the two that I'm going to go through today. Now the first stage in making low density polyethylene is to get our catalyst ready. And in this case, here's a diagram of uh, the catalyst that we use and it's called uh, benzoyl peroxide. And the formula for it is here. So there's also a diagram of what it looks like. And here these rings, these are our benzyl rings. And the way this diagram is, uh, is drawn, and as you can see, you can't see any of the carbons or any of the hydrogens. Those are what the lines and the kinks in the line represent. So all of these uh, little sharp edges or any little um, zigzag kink that you see, all of those represent a carbon with the um, attached hydrogens, unless it's stated. So as you can see, we've got four oxygens there, and that's what's coming off in our equation. So here we have benzyl peroxide. We need to initiate this catalyst first in order to break apart um, our ethylenes. So what we do, we heat it up to 300 degrees Celsius under high pressure, and we're focusing on this uh, oxygen bond right here, and we're going to break this oxygen bond apart. So I've drawn the Lewis dot model for this, uh, for this section, and, and this is the section here that we're looking at. Now the R that I've written here is uh, what we use in chemistry to represent the rest of the molecule. So the benzene ring and that double bonded oxygen, they don't uh, directly, um, they're not the activation site, not the part that's directly involved in um, the bonding structure. So for ease, we just use R to represent the rest of it because I want to focus on what's happening here at the oxygens. So as you can see, I've used different colors to represent where the electrons are coming from. So the blue one coming from the rest of the molecule. Oxygen uh, there in green and purple have six electrons each. So they want two more electron electrons to complete their octet shell. So remember, a nice full shell means a nice stable um, element or uh, molecule. So it wants to find that eight. So what we do with that uh, 300 degrees and high pressure, we're actually breaking this apart. And I've drawn that here. So you can see that there's the missing um, electron here and the missing electron here. So here we've created, once we break these apart, two peroxide, peroxide free radicals. And that basically means that each of these uh, molecules is now an electron short. It wants to find an electron to become nice and stable and get that eight octet shell ready and what we can now do is introduce this to our ethylene. So the next stage is called activation. So imagine I've got um, a nice container here and it's full of ethylene, kind of badly drawn but full of ethylene and now we're adding our free radicals, our peroxide free radicals that we created in the initiation stage. So they're going to go, um, go into our vat. Now as you can see ethylene's going to float around with itself 
it's not going to bond to itself because it's happy. All the electrons, sorry, all the uh, the carbons and the hydrogens have the right amount of electrons. They're all in their octet shells, so they're not going uh, to react with each other. It's this free radical that's going to be responsible for breaking the bond. So here's the dot model of ethylene. So as you can see, each carbon, so this carbon here, and I've used green to represent the electrons coming from the carbon. So it's got the valency of four. It's going to take one from each of the um, hydrogens, and it's going to take two from the chlorine, uh, sorry, from the carbon next to it. And that's the double bond in the ethylene. So the free radical, and I'll just draw that. So that's our free radical here. Remember, it's got um, a blank space. It wants another electron and it's going to see this double bond here and go, you know what, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to break that apart and I'm going to steal it. So it's going to come in and it's going to break this bond apart. And for some reason, my rubber's not working. So it's going to break and break this bond apart and get rid of it so that each carbon now has an electron that's free and floating around. So it's going to come over here with its uh, blank space so I'll just kind of draw it this way and I'll get a different color here so it's got a blank space around its eight and this one that was here nicely bonded is going to bond is going to attach to the oxygen and that's going to make um, the oxygen happy it's going to make the carbon happy but unfortunately what's going to happen here is this electron that was once here is going to be free and it's going to have a gap and it's going to go, but what about me? So let's, I'll draw it out properly so that we can see. Okay, so here's a neater drawn version. And so what's happened here, this is now a single bond. One of the electrons has come here and has uh, taken up the blank space in our peroxide free radical. So now that our free radical is happy, it's no longer a free radical, uh, nicely bonded there. But you'll notice that this carbon is now one electron short. It's got a gap. It doesn't like that it's one electron short. So it's going to actually float around and it's going to see other double bonds in ethylene and go, why do you get to have that? I'm going to steal that from you. So this is why we call it activation. It's going to activate a chain reaction to create a really long chain. So this carbon is going to look at this uh, double bond and go, nah, not going to happen. It's going to break this apart, attach to itself. Then this carbon is going to find another double bonded carbon and break this apart. And it's going to be a big chain reaction. So this creating of multiple chains or really long chains, we call this phase the propagation phase. So here you can see that we have uh, the rest of our benzene molecule, we've got our oxygen, and now we're creating really long polyethylene um, chains. So we have two of them going to make the balanced equation because remember when we broke apart the benzyl peroxide, we had two activation sites or two um, free-ended um, peroxide radicals. So we're creating two chains. Now these can be thousands of monomers long that just keeps going and going. Now the thing with low density polyethylene is that sometimes uh, because we've got this uh, free electron here, sometimes it has a tendency to curl back in on itself. And what that does is it, um, sorry, rubber, it will delete a hydrogen and replace itself with a carbon. So here a carbon will come up, this hydrogen will disappear and it will start bonding in this chain and it will just go off and just keep making chains in this direction while this one keeps bonding over here. So um, low density polyethylene tends to be very branched, um, goes off in all different directions. And this will keep going and going until we reach the termination stage. So for the termination stage, I've drawn a really long uh, branch chain. So here it's going off in this direction over here, and you've got a chain branching out here. You've got this direction over here. So termination happens when this free radical or this um, electron at the end gets satisfied and gets bonded. So what can happen is the natural way that uh, termination occurs is that the hydrogen that, and we're just looking at this area here, the hydrogen that should be here would be replaced by a carbon. This carbon would bond with the other carbon. And then the ends of the chains would kind of all link up and create um, a giant, really, really long chain. 
So that's the natural way that um, termination can occur. Uh, we can artificially stop uh, the chains from growing by adding inhibitors. So these will be ions that would actually uh, take the place of this electron and just link in at the end and kind of stop um, the chain reaction from occurring. We can also lower the pressure or lower the temperature to below 300 degrees, and that will also stop um, the rate of reaction as well. So that's basically how we make low density polyethylene. It's the hardest one to remember because it does have the four stages. So next we're going to look at high density polyethylene, much easier to remember. Now the process for creating high density polyethylene is essentially the same, except we use a different catalyst. Now the first catalyst that I'm going to talk about is the zygonata method. And in this case, we're going to use um, a catalyst, well, it's in an alkane solution. And that's what we're going to put the ethylene into, into an alkane solution. And it's going to contain, uh, contain titanium chloride and triethyl aluminium chloride. So in this diagram, you can see here, here is the um, titanium chloride and here is the uh, triethyl aluminium chloride. So it's, this um, catalyst is going to have two activation sites. So you can see by these jagged lines here. And this is where um, the ethylene's are going to attach to. So in the same way through activation and uh, propagation, these chains are going to take apart that double bond and they're all going to continue bonding onto each other just like we did um, before. The only difference with our high density is that branching doesn't occur. So these will stay as long linear chains going much, much longer than low density um, polyethylene. And they terminate in exactly the same way. So they can uh, clink on to each other at the end, just like we saw in low density, or they can uh, be added to an artificial ion to kind of cap the end. Um, the temperature in this case is only at 60 degrees. So lowering the temperature doesn't so much affect uh, this reaction because it is already occurring at a low temperature. So usually it's just the linking on um, the natural sort of uh, termination that does it. Now, the metallocene catalyst is the newest way that we do this. It has uh, more control of the polymerization process, so companies tend to like this one better, and it's only got one activation site, which is your zirconium ion, which you can see here in the diagram. So again, works in exactly the same method in that it's breaking apart the ethylene's double bond and creating very, very long, single-chained, uh, polyethylene strands. So uh, remember that this is high density, there is no branching. These are really, really long chains. Again, the, uh, the metallocene catalyst follows the exact same um, activation, propagation, termination uh, steps as low density does. So let's do a quick comparison between the low density polyethylene and the high density polyethylene. So um, low density polyethylene tends to be at 1 million grams uh, per mole, whereas the high density being much longer chains are going to be at the 3 million grams per mole. Low density polyethylene is going to be branched. So remember, it has the ability to um, back in on itself. So it tends to have a structure that kind of looks like this, whereas the high density polyethylene is going to be um, a very straight chained molecule. The length of uh, low density polyethylene, whilst they're long, and we're talking um, tens of thousands of monomers long, high density polyethylene is going to be really, really long. So we can talk about hundreds of thousands of monomers long. So take your time, make sure that you have a flow chart for both uh, low density polyethylene and high density polyethylene, and I'll see you in class next lesson.